Hello, and welcome to another episode of Podcast DX, the show that brings you interviews with people just like you, whose lives were forever changed by a medical diagnosis. This episode may not be suitable for all ages. Please use discretion when listening. I'm Lita. I'm Ron. And I'm going to go take a nap. (laughs) I might join you. Collectively, we're the hosts of Podcast DX. On today's show, we are talking about testicular cancer. All right, who's going to get the ball rolling? Mm -hmm. I can start us off with a basic definition. Okay. Testicular cancer occurs in the testicle or testes, which are located inside the scrotum, which is a loose bag of skin underneath the penis. The testicles produce male sex hormones and sperm for reproduction. Ron, do you know if this is a common type of cancer? Well, Lita, compared with other types of cancer, testicular cancer is rare. But testicular cancer is the most common cancer in American males between the ages of 15 and 35. It is treatable, however. Isn't that right, Jean? Oh, yeah. Testicular cancer is actually highly treatable nowadays. It hasn't always been the case, but now it is. Even when cancer, the cancer is spread beyond the testicles into the lymph system, and depending on the type and also on the stage of the testicular cancer, you may receive one of several treatments or any combination of treatments. Well, are the cancer treatments harmful? Certain cancer treatments can harm your fertility or cause sterility, which is extreme fertility. Uh, the effects infertility. In, that's called infertility, right? Got you it. said extreme fertility. Extreme fertility would be the opposite of oh, sterility. Yeah, but that's okay. Keep going. Keep going. All right. The effects might be temporary or permanent. The likelihood that cancer treatment will harm your fertility depends on the type and the stage of cancer, the cancer treatment, and your age at the time of treatment. It's best to start treatment as early as possible. It's good to know the signs and the symptoms to be able to discover the cancer early. Well, what are the symptoms of testicular cancer? I don't know. Ron, you want to help us out? I certainly can. The symptoms of testicular cancer can include a lump or enlargement in either testicle, a feeling of heaviness in the scrotum, a dull ache in the abdomen or groin, also a sudden collection of fluid in the scrotum or pain or discomfort in a testicle or the scrotum, also enlargement or tenderness of the breasts, and yes, men also have breasts. Uh, You can also have back pain, and cancer usually affects only one testicle. While healthy cells grow and divide in an orderly way to keep your body functioning normally, sometimes cells develop abnormalities. The abnormalities cause growth to get out of control and these cancer cells continue dividing even when the new cells aren't needed. The accumulating cells form a mass in the testicle. Well and I think that's something that's important to note because people, some people, tend to think of cancer as like an outside force or alien thing but it's it's your body's cells that grow out of control and don't die when they should and reproduce when they shouldn't. And just like women who do self-exams of the breast tissue regularly for lumps or changes, men should do regular exams for lumps or changes in the size of the testicle and the groin area. You should see your doctor if you detect any pain, swelling, or lumps in your testicles or groin area, especially if these signs or symptoms last longer than two weeks. Right. When in doubt, have it checked out. Um, There are some factors that actually can increase your risk of getting testicular cancer. Uh, For instance, some men have something called an undescended testicle, and I think they'd be aware of that, but that's something you can ask your doctor about. And the testes um, form in the abdominal region during fetal development, and usually then they descend into the scrotum before birth. Uh, Men who have a testicle that has never descended are at an increased or greater risk of forming testicular cancer than are men whose testicles have descended normally. Uh, The risk remains elevated even if the testicle has been surgically relocated into the scrotum. Still, the majority of men who develop testicular cancer don't have a history of undescended testicles. Other factors that may raise your risk are any conditions that result in abnormal testicle development, conditions that cause testicles to to develop abnormally, such as Klinefelter syndrome, um, may increase your risk of testicular cancer. I never heard of that one. Nope. 
we'll future future episode. <laughs> future episode. Would a uh, family history affect the risk? I know, like breast cancer, it follows genetic chains. If your mother or grandmother have had it. Yes, uh, actually, if family members have had testicular cancer, you may have an increased risk. And also, age is a factor. Testicular cancer affects teens and younger men, particularly those between ages 15 and 35, like I previously said. However, it can occur at any age. Race can also be a factor, but it is more common in Caucasian men. Okay, so right between 15 and 35 years of age when you're checking everything out, check out the testes as well. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that covers the topic pretty well. If you have any additional questions, make sure you ask your doctor or healthcare team. And we will put links on our website for anyone wanting more information on how to do a self-exam. How to do a self-exam is going to be on the website? It's on our Pinterest page already. There's several different modalities. Okay. I know. All right. Yep. I guess I'll be working on that. Oh, it's already there. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) No, on the website. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, if our listeners have any questions or comments related... Not like a video of it, but oh, like... thank you. Thank cartoon you. Cartoon picture. Okay. okay. If our listeners have any questions or comments related to today's show, they can contact us at podcastdx at yahoo.com, through our website, podcastdx.com, on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, or Instagram. And if you have a moment to spare, please give us a five-star review wherever you get your podcast. As always, please keep in mind that this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified healthcare provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition or treatment and before undertaking a new healthcare regime. And never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking it because of something you have heard on this podcast. Till next week.